And last but not least, our first place rider in the 50 senior class, Michael Perry from Valley, Arizona. <laughs> yeah, Mike, good race. Hello. How was that race, bud? Yeah, great course. Uh, good course workers setting it up, all the clubs. Appreciate everything. Uh, thanks to my wife and my kid. And of course, Joe Rockstar. Joe Rockstar. You know what I love about racing dirt bikes? You don't have to be good at it to have a good time. Round six of the Arizona Off-Road Championship Series, the Rough Rider 100 was the perfect embodiment of that statement. Although I had one of my worst performances of the season, surviving some of the worst crashes I've ever had, causing costly damage to the bike, all while only getting about three hours of sleep, I can honestly say that this event as a whole was one of the best experiences I have had since throwing my leg over my first bike. It started several months ago when the race promoter Mike Johns, a former pro racer and cancer survivor himself, invited me to be part of his vision for a race that would become a staple of the future of off-road racing in Arizona, the Rough Rider 100. In December, I went to Prescott to meet him and he shared his vision with me. Cheers. We're on the streets of Prescott. Yay. I do a camp up here. Basically, I put out this kids camp and um, do it. I do it with some other people um, and it, we do it once a year. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes Moto Camp. We get these world-class racers like Destry Abbott, Cooper, his son Cooper, um, Steve Hengeveld that come and will spend a week of their time teaching and training these kids about riding. And, and uh, it's just a fantastic week in the evenings when we're all just kind of hanging out, they'll actually share their Christian stories with them about why, you know, Christ is a big deal in their lives. And it's just a really great thing. And it really has been beneficial um, to the kids. The camp needs, uh, relies on donations. It's all volunteer and we needed help. We needed some financial help. So I wanted to come up with some something and that's where we created the, um, the idea for this race. Not just a weekend race, but something that was literally national in scale that uh, would bring in the best racers, to bring the, the top of AMA national, grand national racers out, and to bring them all to one place so that all of us could see these guys battle head to head. Then the idea was, okay, how can we make it even more special? And, and the idea was, Something that's been always been important to me is the history in Prescott of Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders and how they came from here. And, um, and so the name for the Rough Riders came from that. Mike had big dreams and big plans, and he delivered.
Mike asked me to film the race and help promote it. Later, I made two commercials for the race, but I lacked the resources and footage to really represent the venue and the scope of what this race was meant to be. So we set a goal to gather as much footage as we could this year, so we would have plenty of resources for promoting next year's race. On Friday morning, my wife and our precocious two-year-old Groot piled into an overloaded truck along with my brother Robert and made the five-hour drive to Prescott Valley, Arizona. We went straight to work setting up our table to sell Joe Rockstar hats and t-shirts to help raise money and keep this channel going. For all of you that bought something for my wife at the race, I am truly grateful. If you're looking for a way to support this channel, head over to my website www.joerockstar.com and there you're going to find links to pledge donations for the channel and become a Rockstar sponsor, as well as links to buy the Joe Rockstar merchandise. Every bit helps keep the channel alive and I thank you so much for your support. While my wife and brother manned the Joe Rockstar merchandise table, my focus was almost entirely on getting video footage that could be used to promote the next Rough Rider 100 race. In doing so, I wasn't thinking about the race. I was up way too late. And by the next day, before the race had even started, I was already exhausted and my head just wasn't it. I entertained the idea of not even racing, but then again, how could I not? All right, let's do dirt bikes. Now, if I haven't said it before, I'm not a fan of hair scrambles. A friend of mine questioned me about this after the race when I expressed my feelings on the subject over dinner. He touted the merits of this type of race. The excitement of bar to bar racing, the close quarters battles, and the thrill of picking your way through the pack while adrenaline surges with every pass made, with every section conquered, and with every narrow escape from disaster. Now of course I dismissed his comments openly, but I was looking at it all wrong.
Now, suffering from a lack of sleep, I wasn't really on my game, but I was still in the race until this happened. And having not even completed one lap yet, expending so much energy right here was a disaster, but I wasn't out of it yet. This was the nail in the coffin that pretty much ended my chances of finishing in the top five. You all right, man. I'm sorry, dude. I can't stop the 500 that quick. I'm so sorry, man. So if I go, are you okay? Yeah. All right, sorry, man. I don't know how I don't have broken bones. I mean, that just, that's really got into my head. Two wrecks and that one was bad. And somehow we got through that with neither one of us getting injured. That is in my head, I gotta admit. to go off a cliff right there. Over the past few days, I have thought about it a lot. Out of the eight race events that are gonna make up the 2018 AMRA race season, half of them fall into this type of event. How can I have a negative feeling towards half the races and expect to come out on top? And why do I feel this way? After some soul searching, I don't like the answers to these questions. See, these races are physically demanding and require you to be at your best for close to two hours. And I have come to see that it is because I have been lazy and lackadaisical in my preparation. I haven't truly made all of the sacrifices that must be made in order to be successful in these types of races. Sure, I'm putting in the seat time and I'm trying to keep the bike race ready, but I've continued to deny myself the physical training and discipline that a real champion needs to be at the top of their sport. Instead, I rely on sheer determination, will, and luck when I should be relying on physical training, fundamentals, and discipline as well. But here's the thing. What is important here is the journey itself, not the destination. This whole dirt bike riding thing was about making more out of life, not finding a new way to torture myself. 
I don't need to win, I want to win. But I want to have fun doing it. And if winning becomes more important to me than a slice of pizza or relaxing after a day of work, I'll put in the effort to eat better and exercise more. And the benefits that come with those things would probably overshadow any perceived sacrifices that I'm making. And I think that's all that stands in the way of becoming a better version of ourselves, finding what's important to us and working hard towards that end. Joe Rockstar is a name that is meant to be ironic in that I represent the furthest thing from a rock star. I'm an everyday Joe, just like many of you. I'm not blessed with natural ability and talent, but that doesn't stop me from trying. And when the payoff for hard work is this satisfying, can it still really be considered sacrifice? It's a shift in perception from just getting by with being good enough to striving to be better each day and finding fulfillment in the journey. It won't always be huge changes overnight, but little improvements day by day. I don't make podiums, but I love chasing them. I don't ride like a pro, but I'm ecstatic when I learn a new skill. I crash way too often, but I'm encouraged each time I get back up on the bike. And for every setback, there's a lesson. And even though I may not get the whole lesson mastered right away, the journey has been freaking awesome. And to those that we might inspire to take up their own journey, we can all be rock stars. And so as I look back at an awesome race in Prescott Valley that I'll never forget, I'm not so disappointed with my performance because I have gained experience. I'm happy, fulfilled, and ready to continue this journey with a full heart. And what's more is I've experienced being part of an event that is bigger than the result of just one race. I gained valuable race experience, and in the process of doing so, I got to be part of one of the coolest events of the season. By the time the race was over, I was pretty sure I finished dead last in my class. Now imagine the surprise while I was filming the awards ceremony when I heard my name called as the third place winner of my class. I knew something was wrong here. I spent more time on my face and back than I spent on my bike, but hey, I didn't want to make a scene, so I accepted a third place medal, and then I waited till later on that evening to quietly give it back. Congratulations! Good job, Joseph. How was that race, bud? Uh, I thought I got 20th or something like that, so I'm pretty sure this is right. I thought I got 20th. Yeah! Woo! All right, but I'll take a third. Woo! Yeah, you rock! <laughs> he rocks, understandably. I don't know where Phil Ar Argyros, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I don't know where that guy is. He was the true third place winner. But hey, man, they got your medal waiting for you. Joe Rockstar, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm just gonna say this has to be. Jim Johnson, first place rider. I spent most of my time in the dirt on my face or on my back. All right, that's all our riders for tonight. And as a side note, just for the record, this is the third time this season that I've been announced as a third place winner in some way or some form, and it was wrong. Just saying, I think I'm cursed. Day two kicked off with the super mini kids races. By noon, the pro racers were making their way down to the start line. Now usually I do not feature a lot of pro racers on my channel. I figured they get plenty of coverage as pros, and my channel is mostly about showing the struggles of the every man or every woman rider learning to ride. But this was a different race. There were so many big names in the racing circuit here, and I was out there shooting the footage for the future Rough Rider 100 promotions. I figured I might as well include what I worked so hard to get.
Okay, we're gonna talk about going above and beyond to get the shot. Here's my bike way down there. <sighs> I went through great lengths to get some of these shots. It was actually difficult to get around out there. I was trying to be very careful not to get in the way or interrupt the racers. After all, these guys were competing for big money, and I wouldn't want it to be my fault that they lost. Go, Nathan! That's going in the video! <laughs> After seeing these guys ride up close, all I can say is wow. I mean, I'm not even sure these guys are human. They are truly brave men and women, and I tip my hat to these modern day rough riders. Congrats goes out to Taylor Robert for the win, and everyone from the pros to the novices who got their bikes out there and tackled this course, you have my utmost respect and admiration. Thank you so much for the show. And for all you watching, thank you for your support. And we'll see you next time.